Sega. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome uh, to another Total War Shogun 2 um, battle report. I'm joined today by uh, Mr. Gamanan and Sinanatan. <laughs> and uh, say hello, Ingemar, to all the people at home. Hello, every people at home. <laughs> and uh, today I'll be fighting um, a battle against uh, Shogun 2's AI, uh, and I'm playing a defensive siege scenario. You can see here that I'm defending a rather large, sprawling castle. Uh, this castle is built on a mountaintop. Um, it has a sheer drop at the back. Of course, however, there is a, a single small route around the back of the castle using this bridge right here. Um, and this waterfall, which we're bouncing over very deftly. Um, the castles in Shogun 2 can of course be upgraded, giving you more and more uh, kind of uh, different areas to defend, and indeed different defensive structures, and I've got a very high level one to defend today. Now the AI will be approaching me from any number of angles, about 180 degrees in front of the castle. So Ingemar, at this stage of the battle, um, what's the AI going to be looking to do? Well, there are a number of options there. Um, most of this is going to try and surprise you, and uh, kind of take advantage of your weak flanks, or Conservate all its forces. Weak in a flanks. I have no weak <laughs> flanks, Mr. Ingemar. Well, there's one on your left, right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it might not go for that. It might come for like full force, head on. It's um, it's different. Just enjoy it. Right. Well, what I'm doing at the moment is um, I'm pulling all my melee infantry into a single, um, what I'd like to call a powerful block unit formation, or which others may call a blob. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and defend the outfield, as it were, or the very outer perimeter of my castle with archers, and keep all the melee units together so that wherever the AI comes, um, I will hopefully be able to defend. Let's yeah. hope so. Let's hope so. Well, first off, don't you don't you doubt my abilities. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a very adept at this kind of uh, this kind of warfare. Right. So I'm just manoeuvring my troops now. Obviously, I can't see the AI, and the AI can't see how I'm deploying either. So um, we should hopefully be able to surprise one another. And again, I'm just bringing all my melee troops into a single area, and I'm going to back those up with my general, of course, who will give a uh, a morale bonus and various other ability bonuses to all of those troops within his sphere. So you think putting your uh, troops in the front is a good idea then. Yeah, basically what, I, what I'm looking to do here is, is I'm trying to have a, um, a situation whereby wherever they come at me in the perimeter I've got um, like a kind of a big core of shock troops to maybe deal with them. So we'll right. see how see how well my uh, my tactic works. Okay, so immediately I can see the AI is deployed in two different places. Now um, are we going to see a lot of different kind of deployment choices from the AI this time around? Yeah, it will try to do something different every time and uh, it will try and you know keep it fresh. Okay, well, in uh, in honour of the crisp, fresh snow, we can see that we have a large contingent of looks like melee infantry with a couple of units of bows yeah. coming up on the right-hand side as I see it, and then on the left-hand side we have a smaller number of units, um, again long range by the look of it, and also some tepo units here, if, if I'm correct. Maybe it's worth to mention that we don't know what's going to happen now. Yeah, we have no idea. So what goes on next is uh, is a giant uh, is a giant cluster of joy. Okay, so. Here we go. Right, now, pretty soon they should be coming in range of my arrows. Um, so I'm going to bring the arrow archers a little further forward, and I can see where they're going to probably concentrate their attack now. The archers are set to fire at will. Um, you don't want to t uh, take up the kind of positions underneath the walls at all? No. And why no? do you say that with such a note of, are you sure you want to do this, Kira? <laughs> <laughs> As if, like, I'm going to bugger it up. Right, okay, so... Um, Right, now the guys are here, and uh, we are just waiting on them now to, uh, to start firing on the enemy as soon as they come into range. And hopefully this will just scare them off a little bit. What I want to do is, is hold them off at range. Um, oh, oh, it looks like they're thinking a little bit. I'm going to give a bit of thought to what's happening next. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Look at this, because they're like, aha, you'll actually get into my range if you come any further, chaps, so you're going to have to come up with a strategy here. Yeah. Now Being on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, however, they're still moving up, which is slightly more worrying. Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. And over here at the back, um, we can see that there's a number of uh, melee infantry yeah, supported the by the back attack. Is that the official term yep. in, in AI programming uh, lingo? <laughs> the back attack. The back attack. Right, okay. I'm, of course, led by the, uh, the valiant Takeda Shinjin. Mm. See, um, they might not always come from that direction. They may well not, but now they have. So yeah. what I want to do is I want to serve them some casualties as they kind of march uphill. Um, and see how the others are doing. Right, the others have uh, held position. So they're either, oh no, oh, no, no, they're coming come. forwards. Okay, so they're coming forwards on the right, um, and of course we have this sneaky back attack as well. Um, and it looks like they're moving up the hill to the left-hand side too. Yeah. But the right is my immediate concern, so I'm going to go ahead and redeploy my archers in position to to do a bit more damage there. I cannot let those melee infantry get to the walls. So you can see what it's doing. It's doing blades first on the right-hand side. It's doing arrows on the left-hand side, and then the back attack. 
the back attack and the blades first maneuver. Mm -hmm. All of these, of course, ladies and gentlemen, technical terminology <laughs> for war in the 16th century feudal period of Japan. From Sun Tzu himself. Sun Tzu himself said, do the back attack. <laughs> okay, which is not a crazy dance as it might sound. <laughs> do the back attack. Do, 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 do. Okay, right. Um, all right, it looks like I'm gonna need some melee troops down there. So I'm now gonna send my, uh, my melee units down into the throng um, because it looks like the AI is probably gonna pierce that little, uh, that little show I've got going on there. The next thing for me to do is to try and put the willies um, into the enemy, which of course is a British slang term for scaring them, uh, not anything sexual. Um, and I'm now gonna go ahead and hit fire arrows, so hopefully this will do them some morale damage as well as, uh, Ouch. Well as uh, slowing them down a little bit. Okay, so my melee troops are almost there, and, uh, which means it's now time for me to pull the archers back here and get them to leg it, and then commit the melee troops into the combat that the uh, AI Katana troops have just breached. Here we go, lads. Oh, and they've got another sneaky unit coming around here on the right as well. Okay, so the AI has actually moved another unit around onto the right-hand side and is climbing the wall there, flanking my melee force. But not to worry. Oh, you cowardly buggers. Okay, so you can see now that both of my archery units, I didn't pull them back fast enough, um, and now they're getting pounded. Right, so um, how does the AI kind of switch from an initial to a secondary stage strategy? What's it going to be looking to do like in its kind of phase two attack now it's breached the walls? Well, obviously the blades come first over the walls because they're the best troops to uh, engage with first in terms of morale and uh, kind of melee combat. Uh, secondly, you can see the, the, in the middle over there, they're supporting both uh, attacks on the left and the right with its archers and then it's coming on from the back attack and it's already gained control of Ooh, that God. area. The back attack has gone horribly wrong for me here because the uh, the AI has managed to get that area very well yeah. so I'm now going to have to pull my uh, my archers here um, up to the top level of the palisade to try and defend that and abandon that front position that oh, we're getting fired fire at. arrows. Fire arrows. Don't you worry about fire arrows. We've got fire. Don't uh, worry about nothing. More importantly, however, I want to book these uh, these stupid idiots right here in the centre. Right, so I'm going to pick the uh, the enemy unit that's got the weakest morale, this one here with the red bar. I'm going to hopefully um, route them by chucking them in. I'm going to also grab my general, um, if I can find him. Oh, Unfortunately, I believe he's been killed. Ah, oh, my general's routing. Bugger. And now, with my general route, you'll see that the vast majority of my infantry also route having seen my general be killed by a stray arrow from the, uh, from the outfield. The powerful magical balloons that they wear on their back um, were no protection against uh, very highly moving projectiles fired from string bows elsewhere. Apparently those balloons are historically accurate. The they balloons are indeed accurate. In Although battle. you do think they kind of just say, hey, I'm a target, go <laughs> for me. <laughs> right, so uh, when your units route in battle in a siege defensive scenario, they'll route towards the keep, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and they'll try, if they can reassemble, they'll reassemble at the keep. Yeah. Oh, this is looking bad for me. Um, we can see now that even my, uh, my initial rush to get my um, archers to defend that wall that the AI is taking via the sneak back attack hasn't gone very well. Um, and my archers are now getting uh, very nastily cut to pieces in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Of course, archers and hand-to-hand -hand combat don't necessarily go together very well. They are archers, but they are also samurai. Oh, and the enemy is, oh. is capturing this point. Now, what happens if the uh, if the AI gets a hold of the gates? What does that actually do? It grants them access for cavalry and other stuff like that. So, so it's right. quicker to go through gates, but it's harder to capture them. Okay. So you can see in the initial attack, it went through uh, up as many walls as it could do. Look at these cowards streaming back into the centre. But you still oh have the God. you still have the towers, you know. They do provide a defence. They do provide a defence. Um, the, uh, the towers provide an automatic defensive um, position so that if the, uh, the AI is able to uh, attack me and, and gain an area, then uh, mm. a defensive tower, much like, let me see if I can get one in view for our lovely people at home, this one right here, which I'm mousing over now, will automatically fire at any advancing enemy troops. Mm -hmm. However, they only have to capture this area here, now highlighted, and the tower will begin to fire on my own men being used against the defenders. You can see in the lower area that they're actually capturing the towers before they advance to right. gain as much strategic advantage as they can. I'm now moving all of my forces into the centre in a, uh, a final ditch scenario to attempt to control the, uh, the middle because this is obviously what the AI is going to go for next. And their troops have, uh, as you can see, made it to the walls um, and are now beginning to scale them. So we are going to have some serious trouble here. Now this is where you mentioned if they capture gates then of course they don't need to scale the walls so nope. they take a lot less casualties coming in. Mm -hmm. Does the AI prioritise things like attacking and capturing gates and, yes, and things like that? Definitely. Okay, well we can see now unfortunately that my last ditch attempt from the, uh, the sneaky back attack uh, has indeed failed. Um, so I am now kind of recuperating and uh, reconstructing my forces in the centre. 
Um, now, I wish I could explain that slightly more tactically, but the truth is it was a dishonourable retreat into the middle, which I now hope to try and salvage some kind of defence from. Right, let's see what we've got going on here. Right, so the archers are still kind of on the, uh, the outside walls here. And the enemy melee infantry have made it up the back walls. Now, can the archers themselves actually scale the walls? Or, they can, uh, but there shouldn't be reason to do that until... Uh, the melee troops have gained a foothold there. Okay, so it'll, it'll prioritise getting the melee troops over the wall first. Yeah, I mean, as a sensible player Oof. would do. It looks like I'm taking some seriously uh, big firepower here. Something's literally scorching the earth in front of mm -hmm. those guys. And because I was going a nice arc, you don't really have to be in the castle to do damage, like we see right there. Even though you're in the centre of the keep, they can keep on hurting you. Yeah, exactly. So the, uh, the AI is actually getting quite a nice lot of volleys up into the centre of the keep here. Now, their accuracy is not going to be great, given that they're firing uphill. Um, but still, they are doing me some damage, which does prompt me to uh, to perhaps retreat behind the keep itself. Coward. Literally, it's, no, I'm not a coward. <laughs> I'm a tactical mastermind. <laughs> this is not cowardice, my friend. This is leadership personified. Dishonourable. Dishonourable, my buttock. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> my singular buttock. I don't even give prevalence to two. Um, okay. So uh, you can see here now we have the uh, these chaps coming into the centre. Now I'm literally going to be defending to the last in the middle here. Uh, the tattered remnants of my unit's flags unfortunately exhibit the fact that I've been butchered. Um, so it's not in no hurry at all, it's just grabbing those towers, grabbing those gates. It doesn't want to take any casualties as it moves, I assume, so it's grabbed the towers now, which means if I come anywhere near it, the towers are going to get destroyed. Oh god. Look at those flashing white banners, this is not a good sign. Okay. Right, next thing to do then is to, uh, to valiantly defend this one side that we have remaining. Um, and you can see there that the, uh, the AI is sending up some of its troops and we're going to send in everything we have on that flank. Mm. Naganata in. Boashigaru in. Now of course, uh, Ashigaru in uh, close combat is generally a very, very poor tactical decision. Yes, but as they are in the central keep now, they will fight to the last man because... This they, is their last yeah. stand. There There's is no way out. No. Aside from over the side of the mountain and into the waterfall. Or on the top of a katana sword. There is nowhere else indeed, yes. Go home on top of the sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, AI. Strike me down now. I should become more powerful than you can ever imagine. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I shan't become more powerful. I'll just lose this region on the campaign map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, right, let's uh, let's get the AI uh, on the back foot a little, if I can, by uh, firing at him with some arrows. You can see here we've got the uh, the arrows going in, and again, I'm going to switch to fire arrows, which of course are a special ability on a cooldown timer, mm -hmm. um, and have those. Hopefully, there we go. We've started to route the one AI unit coming in on the left, so I can at least score a minor victory there mm. by a good use of the uh, bow Ashigaru. Now let's have them fire onto these chaps here, who don't yet own the gate. Oh, bugger! The first of the melee infantry from the other AI charge has made it into the centre. And they're now scaling Ooh, all of these walls, and yeah. here they come, ready to capture the middle. The time is right. The time is not right, the time is wrong! Okay, hang on. The time, according to getting my buttocks kicked... Right. Okay, the AI melee infantry on the left is now not much more of a threat. However, this large force moving in on the right is. I still need to keep what remains of my army behind the keep to stop them getting pounded by all those archers out the front, which are in a very handy position. Um, but there is nothing remaining to do aside from um, stick everybody in melee mode and throw them in. This is what we call the last ditch. Here we go, lads. Look at these. How swift thy sword, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> cut to pieces. Uh, my peasant Ashigaru here being destroyed by uh, enemy Nodachi Samurai, a Nodachi for those who are not in the know. Nodachi, no doubt, is of course a uh, two-handed, large, almost broadsword style uh, weapon. Uh, not a katana, but mm. somewhat similar. Uh, and unfortunately, of course, the Samurai outclassed my own lowly Ashigaru units, meaning the likelihood of them winning this close hand-to-hand -hand engagement is very small. So, um, does the AI take much notice of the kind of rock-paper-scissors relationship between units in this kind of encounter? Or does it just use whatever it's got to hand? I mean, obviously it, it tries to, but in, in a large castle like this, mm. it, it's got, you know, it is Ooh, the most through sensible. the neck. Ooh. Stabby in the face. It will try Down and fire those forces into it and then do the best match of it can. Obviously it wouldn't be a good idea to put the answers first. No, of course. Ooh, oh, beautiful. Oh, terrible stabbing. Oh, and now we've got the timer up. 
This means that the uh, the AI are beginning to capture the keep. We can see there that the giant warning flag for me. So it's um, holding off on one end. It's, hel it's, it's holding yeah. my forces, pinning them down, and then sending its its uh, infantry into the centre to actually raise its own flag. Down comes my beautiful Takeda banner, and up goes the terrible, horrible sight of a Hojo flag in the middle. You're not even going to live to see defeat. Hey, excuse me, okay, at least one man will drag his bloodied corpse to see their flag go up over my castle. Oh god, it's going wrong for me. 27 seconds, and uh, the AI's utterly ruined me. I didn't even get to, uh, to last the 27 seconds. Didn't even need his cavalry. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, um, you know, I, I intentionally showed you a defeat in this instance. Um, otherwise, right. I would definitely have embarrassed Ingemar and his good and uh, <laughs> AI techniques. But thank you all for joining us on this uh, Shogun 2 uh, battle report. And thank you, Ingemar. Thank you, Ken.